So as far as my sleep system goes, when I look at the five different ways that heat is lost, sit. So what I am concerned about when I'm sleeping are the conduction and the convection. So I'm concerned about conduction because I know that, so if I lay my 98.6 degree body on a 80 degree ground, the worst, then I know that the entire time that I'm in contact with this ground, conduction's gonna occur, and it's gonna be pulling my body heat out of me and soaking it up into the ground. So what I need to do is insulate myself from the ground using something like a thermarest. Uh -oh. The majority of my body heat would be lost through conduction if I didn't use these. And that would be my first thing that I would throw down. Then after that, you need a good sleeping bag system. Uh, I like the snug packs. This is the snug pack Special Forces 1. This is the patrol bag, so it's a lighter bag. It's used for, for a little bit better weather. So this is what I normally carry down here in the south. Um, if it's colder, uh, or when I was up in the northeast, I would carry the Special Forces 2, which when you get the entire system, I'll show you this real quick. When you get the entire system, you get the patrol bag, which is the Special Forces 1, and then the Special Forces 2 is a larger bag that gives you a lot more insulation. And it says right on here, your comfort level in this bag is 41 degrees Fahrenheit. And the lowest that you should be able to use it in is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So basically, if it's above freezing, I use this one. This one, the Special Forces 2, has a comfort level of 18 degrees Fahrenheit and the low is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So if it's going to be below freezing, I would take the Special Forces 2. So whenever possible, I take the smallest bag possible, but I have the option of using both because the Special Forces, you can buy these separately, but you can also buy them as a complete system. And when you buy them as a complete system, you get the, the Special Forces 1 bag, Special Forces 2 bag, you get this awesome stuff sack, but you also get this, which is nothing more than a basically a center baffle. It's a center baffle that allows you to zip those two together and use the bags in conjunction with each other and make it that much better. So if it gets below 10 degrees Fahrenheit, you can zip the both of those together and use them and still be comfortable. It's a little bit warmer out here today, so all I need is the patrol bag. Then in most cases, having a poncho up like this or having some sort of overhead cover is going to be enough. Um, but then most military sleeping bag systems also come with a bivy sack. And a bivy sack, this one is a Gore-Tex bivy sack, so it's waterproof, windproof. And it's basically a sleeping bag cover. that allows you to use it as a standalone shelter. Um, if I was going around somewhere and I found a good natural shelter and I didn't want to put up some sort of overhead cover, but I d also didn't want to leave myself exposed to the wind or the rain, I could put my sleeping bag system inside this Gore-Tex shell and sleep out right under the stars. These are pretty bulky. So what I like to keep in here and this kit, and remember this is the kit and that layering system that I keep inside my backpack that I can take out and take with me if I go somewhere uh, away from my main source of gear. But this has this little guy here, which is a snug pack uh, bivy sack that's basically designed to go with uh, the Special Forces sleep system. This little guy I can carry everywhere. You saw what a small pouch it fits in, but this is a waterproof, windproof bivy sack. So usually I'll use this one. And even if I do have this overhead cover, if the wind is really whipping and it's getting into my shelter or it keeps changing direction or it, uh, you know, it's raining outside and it's you know, one of those Forrest Gump sideways rains, uh, I'll still get inside this baby cover inside my shelter and that'll protect me that much more. Then, last but not least, 
these little guys. This is a cocoon mummy liner. So basically this is a Cool Max liner. That's kind of a wicking layer. Little thin, almost like a t-shirt material. But it's basically a mummy liner that sits inside your sleeping bag. And this will give you an extra five to 10 degrees of warmth. But what I like it most for is if you've ever tried to use one of those emergency blankets, the thermal mylar blankets, uh, you sweat like it's your job. Um, so I like to have this, once you start sweating, that, that just kind of pools there and it, it makes it really uncomfortable uh, to sleep in. So this is small enough that I can pack pretty much anywhere. And uh, if I get in a situation where I don't have my main sleeping bag, but say I've just got you know, one of these thermal mylar blankets or whatever, I can still use this wicking layer to kind of pull the sweat away from my body um, because those thermal blankets don't breathe at all uh, and I'll be a lot more comfortable that night. So I do like these mummy liners um, and then like I said you can use it in conjunction with your sleeping bags, any sleeping bag system and it's going to give you uh, an extra 5 to 10 degrees warmth depending on your environment. So that's that's the sleeping system. Basically You've got some sort of ground cover, ground insulation that protects you from conduction. And then you've got your insulating material, meaning your actual sleeping bag. And I've showed you everything from, you know, uh, mummy liner to the Special Forces 1 patrol bag to the Special Forces 2, which is a heavier winter bag. Uh, use those two in conjunction. Um, all of that is, uh, is your insulating layer. And then your windproof, waterproof layer is that Gore-Tex baby cover. Uh, That'll protect you better from convection, you know, the, the wind current that's traveling across your body and taking your body heat with.